So on today's setup guide, we are checking out the very awesome Yuzu Nintendo Switch emulator, and I'm going to be showing you how to configure this in Set It Up in Emu Deck for Windows, which is of course now free. So I'm going to be showing you which type of files we need to get Yuzu up and running with. I'm going to be showing you where to place those files. I'm going to be showing you how to set up your controller, going through some video settings, and more importantly, how to get the best performance through Yuzu and Emu Deck for Windows. So check this one out. Okay, before I start today's MU Deck for Windows Switch and Yuzu setup guide, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content that I upload on my channel every day on my channel, just Jamie. So we're looking at Yuzu and setting this up and of course Yuzu is probably the best Nintendo Switch emulator out there. Period. Uh, we also got Rio Jinx, although I do find Rio Jinx isn't as good, but Rio Jinx also has its advantages and disadvantages. So, anyways, what we're going to do is go over to the Yuzu website, and the first thing I do recommend you doing is just taking a look at compatibility. If we go just here, if there's particular games in your Nintendo Switch collection that you have and you want to emulate in order to get better resolution or whatever, just take a look at this compatibility list and this is going to tell you just here what works brilliantly and not so brilliantly so for example if i just scroll down this list we're going to find some color codes just here now in blue we're going to find perfect and what this is saying is that your game is going to work 100 percent pretty much flawless playable throughout and if we go to green it's going to be great but it's going to have some flaws and you can just take a look at the little guide at the top just here and it's going to tell you which each one these color codes mean so like i was saying blue perfect 100 percent brilliant pretty much and all the way down to gray where it's not going to boot now my recommendation is your games should be in blue if you want that perfect nintendo switch experience now the next thing i'm going to suggest doing is downloading a copy of Razer Cortex. Just download it and install it. And what this does, it gives you more of a smooth experience when you're gaming. What this program does is just frees up memory in the background and it disables unnecessary programs for running, taking up resources, uh, CPU and GPU. And it's so simple. When you use this, just go to Game Booster. And from here, it will automatically detect which programs you don't need running in the background. So just go to Boost now. And as we can see, it's releasing memories, disabling those programs. And this is freeing up memory to put that memory into your Yuzu gaming. And there we go. In my case, I've just saved 2.82 gigabyte of memory. Excellent stuff. So the next thing we're going to want to do is take a look at files folder just here. Now for Yuzu, we need two files. One of them is called prod.keys and the other one is called title.keys. So you need both of these. Now what I'm going to do is just copy both of these files and I'm going to look for that folder where I installed MU Deck for Windows to. So in my case, when I stored MU Deck for Windows, it went straight into my C drive and it created a emulation folder. And in my emulation folder, we got a BIOS folder. And here we go, we got Yuzu folder. Now, if I just paste prod.keys and title.keys just here, I'm gonna just pop in title.keys into my keys folder. And I'm also gonna pop in my prod.keys into that keys folder. And for this setup guide, I've got a game here, which I always use on Yuzu emulation guides. We've got Kirby and the Forgotten Lands. This one works brilliantly with Yuzu. So within that emulation folder, I'm going to back back out again and again and go into my ROMs folder. And if we just scroll down here, we're going to find Switch. And here we go near the bottom. So within that switch folder, I'm going to just pop in my Kirby and the Forgotten Lands .nsp file. And if I just copy that into that switch folder, everything should be now good to go. And of course, the way to open up MU Deck for Windows is just open up your Steam app. 
we're going to go to library and from here i'm going to select emulation station desktop edition and just play this to boot up emulation station and here we go so we're inside of emulation station and we can now see nintendo switch pretty simple stuff here is the game now remember we can scrape some artwork for this so all we need to do is go to main menu we're going to go to scraper and if we go down free scrape these systems just make sure nintendo switch is checked come out and if we go down to, to content settings from here you can then select which type of artwork you want to download we can also enable videos to be downloaded i'm going to leave everything checked go to back and i'm going to go to start And while this is scraping, let me just remind you that Yuzu works from something called a shader system. On your first boot and your first time playing one of your Nintendo Switch games through the Yuzu emulator, you're going to find it lags a lot. And what's happening there is that it's taking all the bits of data and all the bits of artwork and everything else, all the graphics from your game, and it's compiling it into a folder. On your second time of playing the same game, or even your third time, you will find it becomes a lot, lot smoother. So anyways, we got our artwork and our preview video. Let's open. Now at this point you're going to find your controller isn't working so what you need to do is press escape on your keyboard to enter this window mode and from here we can set up your controller. If we go to emulation, configure, controls, now under input device you can find your controller. I'm using an Xbox controller so I'm going to go down to Xbox One controller zero. I'm going to go to new. And I'm going to give this controller profile a name and go to OK. And right just here where it says Pro Controller, I'm going to leave this to Pro Controller because Kirby works really well with this. So once you've done that, just go to save and that's now saved your configuration for your controller and your controller should be set up automatically. Now, if I go to apply, OK. I can now use my controller so i'm going to play this game just for around a minute just to build up the shaders like i was just talking about so to go back into full screen mode i'm going to go to view full screen So what I tend to do with Yuzu Emulator, since it needs to build all those graphics, what I do, I tend to move around a lot in the game just so it can capture all those necessary pieces of graphics. Okay, so let's just exit out of Emulation Station. So main menu by pressing Start. Quit Emulation Station really quick. Just press Yes. Now let's actually go into the user emulator itself. And of course you can get to this by going to your C drive. And from C drive you're going to find a users folder. If we go to users, 
You should then find a folder with the name of your computer, it's Jamie in my case, and from here we're going to look for the EmuDeck folder. If we go inside there, you're going to find Emulation Station. If we go inside of there, we're then going to go down to Emulators, and from here you're going to find a Yuzu folder. If you go in there, we're going to open up the next folder, and if we scroll down, we can then find the yuzu.exe. This is the emulator. If we open this. Okay, so this is the emulator, which was just running through emulation station. So to change the video settings, what we're going to do is go to emulation at the top, configure. And from here, we're going to go down to graphics. And from here, we can change the backend driver. So, for example, if you find out a game is running very sluggish and it should be running perfectly according to the user compatibility list, just switch this over to OpenGL. And in some cases, Yuzu Games is going to work fine. So there's an option just there. Now, the next thing to take a look at is resolution. If we just drop this down, we can increase our internal resolution of Switch games up to around seven times. I find that on good games that work really well, some will boost up to around three times. If you've got the seven times, you'll find even on your best high-end gaming computers that your games will begin to lag. And I'm also running background processes whilst I'm doing this video, so I'm going to just leave this to 720p to 1080p. Now, the next thing to look at here is anti-aliasing method. We can use this in order to take away little jagged edges, perhaps around games, uh, to smooth things out. So we got an option here then of FXAA and SMAA. Now if we go to advanced at the top just here, we can go to anastrophic filtering, and this is going to add a slight blur to your gameplay, just to make things look a little bit nicer. Again, if you're running a potato computer, I would personally leave this to default. So if you really fancy going up to 16 times, go up to 16 times, but your games might begin to lag by doing so. Okay, so as we've got the Yuzu emulator open, what we're going to do is just add games to this. So just double left click, and we're going to find the location of your Yuzu games. And the reason for doing this is that we can set video settings per game. Now, if we go to find that emulation station folder where we just put our Switch games, so it's going to be in emulation, it's going to be in ROMs. And what we're going to do is just drag this down until we find that Switch ROMs folder. And here we go. So just left click, select folder, and this is now put our game inside. And what I'm saying is we can configure video settings with different games is that you'll find some video settings works fine for one game, whereas the same video settings for another game doesn't work so well. So per game, what we need to do is just highlight the game, right click on it. And from here, we're going to go down to properties and we can then configure the video settings for each game. So graphics and we can change the video settings from here. And if you're using Vulkan and you've got a GPU or graphics card, just make sure under device that your graphics card is enabled. So you've got all the settings just there, such as resolution. And if we go to advanced graphics, we can also find the same video settings here, such as anastrophic filtering. And just press OK on that. And right at the bottom just here, you're going to find a little button which says dots. If you left click on it, it will then come to handheld. Now, if you're running a lower end computer, I suggest popping this on handheld. If you put it on dots, it's going to give you a, literally a dot display. So obviously, if you put a real Nintendo Switch into dot mode on your TV, the screen looks better. And so for Yuzu. So if you've got a lower end computer, make sure this is on handheld. So I'm going to leave this on docked, and this time I'm going to open up my Switch game direct from the emulator itself. If I right click on it, we can then start the game with my configurations, video configurations I've just added. Or we can go to start game without custom configuration. So if I go to start game.
as we can see, Kirby is still very slow. So this time, I'm going to open up Yuzu again, and I'm going to switch the back-end driver, video driver that is. So this time, I'm going to switch the back-end video driver. So I'm going to right-click on the game, Properties, and we're going to go to Graphics. And I'm going to switch the API to OpenGL this time. If I go to OK, and I'm going to open up my game now. So right-click, Start Game. That's it for my MU deck for Windows and Yuzu Nintendo Switch setup guide today. Like I said at the start, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content on my channel. Also feel free to join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.